Um, thank you so much. I'm so excited to talk about our new season. I know. So you obviously can't give too much away because you, you know, you want the fans to be surprised. But what can you tell us? Because everyone is dying to know what they can expect on season two. I mean, well, season two is a lot darker, okay? Um, it's not as family friendly esque. I mean, the JSA and the ISA, like leaving season one, we just had a major showdown and, you know, Icicle died, Brainwave died, Dragon King died, um, Rick secretly spared Solomon Grundy and Beth's goggles were destroyed. So, oh, and also Cindy escaped with a black diamond and I'm struggling with my involvement with um, Brainwave and killing him and everything. So, we pick up six months later and um, we reunite. We have been searching Blue Valley for new villains, new things to like, you know, discover. And there's there's nothing going on. And we kind of feel like it's a waste of time. <clears throat> Courtney though, she's so, she's so, <laughs> um, determined to find uh new secrets in blue valley and we're kind of just like girl like let it go we're we're good now right but then obviously uh we discover the shade and obviously there's eclipso who has a big big arc this season he's the most terrifying thing in the world i mean he's haunting me i i'm still dealing with henry and brainwave's death um this season and you know, I'm still being rejected by my family. So, so it's a lot. And it, it's, it kind of, it kind of, have you ever seen that movie, uh, Shutter Island? I have. I actually, in, in high school, that was what I studied for my, uh, you know, my 12th grade assignment. So I know that movie very well. I watched it about 500 times. Okay. So I would say like Yolanda's character parallels, like it, there's a lot of parallels. She, it's like, is she going crazy? Is she really seeing these things she starts hearing brainwaves hum she doesn't know if she's driving herself crazy so she really leans into her faith this season which I think is great because you don't really see a lot of shows um focus in, focusing in on on people's religion or character and I feel like the writers did a great job at exploring that um so we have we're dealing with this huge villain eclipso and and we have the, a new character the shade we have jenny green lantern's daughter coming about so there's going to be a lot of cool new things to explore and a lot of a lot of new things that people can can relate to and and a lot a lot of new discoveries it's going to be awesome cool. i'm excited but i love what you said about how your character is going to lean on faith this season because you are so right. That's something that we we don't see. And I think that will kind of really help a lot of people who are, you know, going through things in life that they can also lean on their own faith. For sure. I mean, her faith, yeah, this season, it's something that she leans on heavily and she's scared out of her mind. She thinks she's going crazy. Um, she doesn't know if she's seeing things or if they're actually happening. Um, yeah. So the religion is something that's super explored in the show and and I can't wait for people to see it because it's 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 very it's very authentic to my character and it's something that I could relate to as as you know growing up with a Mexican mom. It's 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 culturally influenced and and I find a lot of similarities to it and I appreciate it. So it's great that they're focused, they're giving each character something, you know to focus on giving them their own background and, and being able to explore that. Yeah. So what do you think is the greatest similarity between you uh, in real life and your character on the show? I mean, Yolanda making those mistakes first season, I feel like there's no way I couldn't relate to that. I feel like um, as a young adult, you're constantly exploring new things you're curious as to like the boundaries that you can push you know so I think that was super relatable and I didn't really have anything to reference on um uh, wildcat you know throughout the years it's it's a brand new character it's being revamped so I think that was a blessing in disguise because I'm very much the type to like go back and do my research and and try to find those things so the fact that I was able to just create her from a bear 
from bare mind, just me being Yvette, like the only things I can pull from are, are myself. It was, it was a great experience. It was, it's, it's authentic. It's true. And so, yeah, I think, I think Yolanda making those, those mistakes in the, in the first season, it's super relatable. I think everyone goes through that and just trying to um, revamp herself and, and see herself as like this new strong, like seeing it more as like a part of who she is rather than a mistake. Because I think first season that, that, that's what she focused on was like, I can't believe I did this. Whereas like this time she's kind of becoming stronger because of it. So I, I love remember. that. And how did it all start for you? How did you get, you know, get involved with the show? Because a lot of people uh, don't know that. And a lot of people, when they found out I was interviewing, were, wanted to know, you know, how you first even got the role. Well, <clears throat> I first got the role um, I auditioned for it and I was here in LA and I went in. It's funny. I actually have the audition video. I Ooh. fell on my bum and they thought it was the greatest thing ever. They're like, oh yeah, because of my reaction afterwards. It, it was a great audition. It was fun. Um, but I was completely myself. I, I was grounded. I got the script like a couple hours beforehand and I was like, I can't, I can't fake this I just have to go in grounded and just be the most genuine authentic person that I can be so I went in with that it worked um I booked a movie actually and then I was called back for the for the call back about a month and a half later and I was already in Spain and I was like oh no I can't make it to the call back and instead of having the call back they just sent me straight to producer session and they're like, okay, Jeff Johns is gonna hop on a call with you. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> this is crazy. I'm grateful that that they're still interested, right? Because I wasn't able to make make that call back in person. So we met, we got, we hopped on a phone call. We kind of discussed the character a little bit. And he was just like, okay, retape it, and just like we'll see, we'll see how it goes. And I'm like, is there any notes or anything? While I'm in Spain, by the way, it was so hard to get someone to read the opposite, oh um, gosh. opposite sides. I was in Bulgaria, nobody spoke oh. English. So I was like, what do I do? Luckily, my agents found a casting director in Bulgaria that could read the sides for me. And so that I retaped my audition and with a Bulgarian casting director and I sent it in. And I got a call, like in Bulgaria, it was four in the morning. And I was like, what is, why do I have an email alert right now? And it was my agent saying that I got the job. And that was it. When I came back from Spain, I had a job ready to go a couple months later. And it was, it was the most perfect thing ever. Yeah. Like, well, it's obviously it was like it was meant to be because I, I don't think there is really anyone else to play her. Like you, oh, it feels like she really oh, is meant for you. Thank you. I really feel that way. And honestly, the writers really do a good job at incorporating ourselves, like the each person and, and their individual lives. I, I couldn't ask for a better team. Like they're really phenomenal and they, they take the time to get to know us. They take the time to you know, see what our strengths are, what our weakness are, weaknesses are, and they incorporate that in the show. And I feel like that's why it's so authentic. Maybe that's why it reads so well, because we have such a great team. So thank you for saying that. I, I really appreciate that. Well, it's the truth. It's the truth. And uh, just before we do go, like, what is it that you hope that, that people do get when they watch season two? Mm -hmm. I hope that they see I mean for me personally my character goes through a lot of psychological hell so I mean just the strength to move forward and and things aren't always as bad as they seem and you can overcome things so you can overcome nothing is as bad as it seems I think I'll leave it there yeah, I love that. I love that. So not only entertainment, but you know, I love that people are also going to get something out of it in that way. Yeah, for sure. They're going to be able to relate to it in their own lives and hopefully they'll catch all the little metaphors and the little, um, where, what's that thing they call it? The egg, the eggplants? No, not the eggplants, the, the Easter, egg. yeah. the Easter eggs. Yes. Yeah, that's fun. It's always fun. 
Well, congratulations. I'm so excited and I can't wait to watch. And I, I can't wait to interview you in for season three because I'm sure I'll have so many questions about this season. Yes, and I love your hair. It's so nice. I oh, like the curl there. Thank you. I, I, call it I my love your curl. Roll. Say that again. I call it my victory roll. It means I'm always victorious. Oh my gosh, I love that. It suits you so well. Oh, well, thank you. you. And good luck with the rest of your interviews. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.